I love this. I still cannot believe that this is mine. I, I cannot tell you every time I open the garage how excited I am to see this here. It's still, I'm still in disbelief. It's still hard to believe that, that I built this, that it's mine, that it's in my garage. Every time I come out here and flip the lights on, it's just the biggest smile I'm capable of physically making. <laughs> I love my zip. So here we are, uh, four years into building the zip, and she's done. She's done. Finally. Finally done. Again, by done, I still have a couple tiny little things to do, but I'm using it. It's done. Uh, so let's go over the experience of building the zip. Um, you know, it's been a freaking emotional roller coaster on this thing. Uh, there's been joy and disappointment. Uh, there's been frustration. There's been excitement. Uh, there's been doubt when I was working on the floor planks. Um, you know, year into this boat, year and I don't know, year and four months, something like that. You know, I got to a point where I was really starting to doubt whether or not. I would be able to complete it. Maybe I had bit off more than I could chew, you know, and I started to doubt myself. Um, there's been triumph, there's been uh, pride, and now I'm into, I think, the final stage of boat building, which is disbelief. You know, uh, I open that garage door and I'm still blown away that I built it, that it's mine, that I own it, and I created that from a pile of boards, you know. So final stage of boat building, disbelief, we're here. Um, let's talk about, you know, again, time and money, time and money. Um, as far as zips go, time-wise, uh, I'm way, way beyond what most people spend hours-wise to build this zip, by a lot. Um, most people, you know, build a zip in five to 700 hours. And you could just about build two zips in the amount of time I built mine in. So, you know, again, a lot of that was choice. A lot of that was, you know, building the stainless, uh, repairing the outboard. You can shave a lot of time off this boat. If I sat down and made a list, you'd be blown away by how much time you could shave by just making different choices. But again, I, I wanted it to be everything I ever wanted this boat to be. So. It took what it took. Uh, and and dollars-wise, originally I had kind of set what I thought the boat was going to cost between ten and fourteen thousand. Uh, we came in at eleven two, so I'm kind of on the lower end of my guess. Um, that's about average for a zip with the same features. You know, plank deck, stainless work, uh, plank flooring. Uh, you know, nice upholstery. Yeah, that's about average. So let's talk about some of the reasons I make these videos. You know, some of them I've talked about in the past, some of them I haven't. Um, so, you know, one, one of the reasons I make these videos are to, you know, inspire others, you know, that maybe are interested in building a boat, but maybe a little, a little uh, you know, intimidated by it or, or fear that they lack the skills or ability or, or what have you. It's to, to inspire others. Give it a try. Uh, chances are it'll turn out every bit as nice or better than mine. Um, you know, another reason that, that, that I make these videos is to show that, that people, again, with, with little experience, like I had, uh, with large amounts of effort, can turn out something beautiful. Again, you know, to encourage and inspire others. Part of that. Um, to plant seeds of confidence in people that maybe lack a little bit, maybe want to try it. Um, and then there's, there's other reasons that are, in my opinion, a little selfish, but this is truthful. Um, it's to leave a video legacy for my kids. Um, you know, sometime in the future, if they, you know, when I'm dead and gone, maybe they want to see me, hear my voice, hear me babble for countless hours about something they may or may not be interested in. 
um, you know, they, they can access these YouTube videos anywhere on the planet at any time of day, any time they ever want to hear or see me, you know. So I really wish I had something like that of my stepdad or my dad, you know, but I don't. So there's a semi little selfish reason for doing these videos. So let's go over reactions to the zip. Um, this is something I'm actually pretty excited to, to talk about and lots of people have asked about it. So the very first time I ever took the zip out of the garage on the trailer to go somewhere, basically I was testing the trailer. I wanted to see if the tongue weight was right, you know, if it tracked straight, if it pulled funny, if it felt weird, just test the trailer up. <clears throat> so I, I leave my house, get it down my really steep driveway, backed around, turned around, down to the main road, and about a half mile from my house is a grocery store. Um, so I pull into that grocery store parking lot and I get out and I'm just checking tie straps front and back, checking to make sure that my uh, trailer ball latch is locked and secured. Um, again, checking trailer light connection. I'm feeling the hubs to make sure that the bearings are cool. Half mile from my house. I, I, I hadn't been in that parking lot three minutes and two different vehicles stopped, got out and wanted to talk. And that resulted in about uh, you know a half hour conversation. I hadn't left my house for ten minutes, you know. So that that really blew me away. Lots of people warned me. There's going to be people that are going to talk. They're going to stop. They're going to have questions. And I just kind of ah grain of salt, you know. Didn't really pay too much attention to it. That's my first experience. Second one, we took the uh, zip for its maiden voyage. Um, again, I had my buddy in the chase boat. Uh, we go to a lake that's about 20 minutes from my house. Excuse me. Put that out. So we go to a lake that's about 20 minutes from my house. I know this lake. I've been to this lake lots. I know that this lake has a 10 mile an hour speed limit, which we obviously ignored. Um, so we're out there. We're blasting around wide open as fast as my, my zip can go, 27 miles an hour, you know, almost three times the speed limit on the lake. And uh, we get met at the dock. We're done, we're calling a day, we're going home. We get met at the dock by some real upset kayakers who we apparently had waked pretty bad. And uh, I'm offshore, I'm idling around in a circle. My buddy's loading his boat and I can see these kayakers just chewing his ass, just letting him have it. And I'm snickering, ha ha ha, as I'm idling around out there, you know. Get him, get him. So he gets his boat on the trailer, you know, missing a large portion of his ass. And now it's my turn to load and they're still waiting. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So I'm pulling up to the dock. I go into instant apology mode. I mean instant. I am so sorry, ma'am. I had no idea that this was a, a 10 mile an hour speed limit lake. Uh, it'll never happen again. Please forgive me. So I get about a 10 second, you know, warning from her. You really need to pay attention. You know, if, if this were young kids, they could have possibly gotten hurt. I am terribly sorry. It will never happen again. Uh, the remaining 30 minutes were her and her husband just questioning me about the boat. Every question you can imagine, you know, how long did it take? Did you make this? Who did this? You know, um, yeah. So first trip out officially, the zip saved my ass, which I was super excited about. Uh, so then third trip, third trip out in the boat, ever leaving the garage for real on the trailer. Uh, I go down to put gas in it, a local fuel station. Uh, the guy who puts gas, or hands me the nozzle to put gas in it. The attendant, he, he wants to talk about the boat, all sorts of questions. Um, in, the, in that five minute span of putting fuel in the boat, two of my former coworkers, who had saw the boat up to about the second year of the build, they saw me, they pulled into the gas station. Uh, another guy from two pumps over, he comes over to talk about the boat. So that stop involved about about a half hour conversation or so between, between the four people just putting fuel in the boat. Um, so then the fourth trip out, that was the trip to the, another lake where we dinged up the prop. So I get to the lake, uh, we're staging the boat. I haven't pulled up to the ramp. I'm just loading life jackets. I'm disconnecting um, tie downs. Uh, loading up bumpers, just prepping the boat to get turned around and back down the ramp. And I see the uh, Marine Sheriff pulling in and I'm going, oh shit, I don't have insurance. I don't have, 
I don't have a, a fire extinguisher. I don't have hall ID numbers. I don't have registration stickers. I don't have anything. And I'm going, oh crap. So the sheriff, I mean, beeline straight to my boat. Nowhere else, no stops, straight to my boat. And he gets out and I thought, oh, here we go. I'm gonna, send, I'm gonna get sent home before I even get a touch the water. He could care less. He never asked me a single legal question whatsoever. Didn't care about registration, didn't care about fire extinguisher, never asked, never asked to see um, insurance, never asked to see a single thing, life jackets, nothing. All he was interested in was the boat. Question after question after question, and I was just blown away. Second trip out, twice now the zips got me out of getting my ass chewed. <laughs> it's got me out of trouble twice. So yeah, fantastic experiences everywhere I go, everywhere. And that's not all of them, that's just you know four good examples. And it, it's really humbling, and I don't mind it a bit. I'll, I'll sit and talk to anybody who has questions about it. So let's talk about something that, that I've been asked, uh, but I don't believe I've ever talked about before, and that is, if you were gonna do it all over again, would you do anything different? And if so, what would they be? The answer, the easy answer is yes, I would do something different. And it's one thing, one particular thing. And that is, I would, I would build my transom for a long shaft or a 20 inch shaft. Currently where my outboard sits, it, it is cut out. And that sets the height of the outboard so that your cavitation plate is, is dead flush or slightly above the bottom of the boat. So I built my transom in the classic style. You know, I, I love the look of it, I do, um, for a 15 inch leg or 15 inch shaft outboard, short shaft. If I were gonna do it all over again, I would make that transom for a 20 inch shaft or a long shaft. Um, so instead of actually cutting out and dipping down three inches, that would actually protrude up about two inches. So I would build that transom, you know, for like 21 inches tall or so, and then, you know, once the boat's flipped over and I have an outboard, hang the outboard on it, see how far that, that outboard needs to come down for the cab plate to line up, and then cut that transom to match a long shaft outboard. Uh, again, it will stick up, it will protrude, it won't be below. And personally, I think a short shaft transom looks better. But the truth of the matter is, finding short shaft outboards in 40 horse is getting very, very difficult. Uh, Again, I couldn't find a 40 horse, so I ended up with a 25, and fortunately, as luck would have it, I ended up with a good one that runs very strong and is adequate, plenty adequate. I'm very, very happy with that 25, and I won't change it. That's all I'll ever run on my zip. But if I could recommend doing one thing different in, in a zip build or any other boat for that matter, build it for a 20 inch long shaft outboard. So let's, let's go over some, some reasons to build, to build a boat, your own boat. Um, you know, there's lots of different reasons. We've talked about some of them, some of them we haven't. But again, you're gonna learn skills, skills in life, life skills. I think that uh, some people might be discouraged from building their own boat because they don't think they possess those skills. Well, you know, the truth of the matter is, at one point in time, you didn't possess skills to wipe your own ass. You know, it's something you learned. So don't be put off by not having the skills, you know. Um, the reason they call it a skill is it's learned. You get better and better and better at it uh, with time and experience. So, you know, the things you learn building a boat or the zip or any boat are, are lifelong skills that you'll use in other portions of your life. Um, it's also a challenge. It's very challenging to build a boat. Uh, it's mentally, and physically a challenge, and it's stimulating for both. Um, you know, there's some physical labor in doing it. Uh, a lot of hand sanding, a lot of plane work, you know. Um, and it's also a constant puzzle for your brain to figure out. Um, so there's another, another positive and plus uh, for building your own boat. Um, another reason uh, is it's a custom boat. It's a one-off, handmade, custom boat. Whereas if you went and bought a boat, whether it's new or used, um, you know, in, in one way or another, you're going to settle 
for something that's not exactly what you wanted. Whether it be, you know, uh, length or width, or maybe it has a live well that you don't need or won't ever use, you know, it's wasted space, you wish it would have had a cupboard here or something. Uh, you know, when you buy, and anything in life like that production-wise, generally, you know, when you buy whatever, a guitar, a house, a boat, a car, uh, you know, what you're looking for is that particular item has the maximum amount of features in the places and the types of features that you're interested in. Is it going to have them all? No. And that's a great reason uh, to build your own boat. It's everything you want. It's in the exact place you want it to be. It's the color you wanted, the material, uh, you know, the look, the placement, everything about it. It's a hundred percent handmade, one-off, custom to your exact specifications. And you won't find that anywhere else in any production, anything. Um, so that's another reason. Another reason is cost. It is substantially cheaper to build a boat than to buy a new one. Uh, again, we've got 11,240, 50 bucks into the zip. We we'll call it, you know, 11,250, right? Um, good luck finding a new boat on the market for that. That's not just a plain Jane aluminum 11 and a half foot tub. Good luck. So for substantially less cost, again, throwing away your labor, don't count your labor, your labor is free to you. But just the cost of materials, it's substantially cheaper to build your own boat over buying new. Um, of course, that doesn't apply to the used market, but over buying new. So let's talk about, about people I've met during this boat build. And by met, I mean it's mostly <laughs> digital media in one way or another. Um, There are people, it's more, more common in the U.S., but there are people worldwide that are building the Zip uh, or a Glenel model. And I've been contacted by, by these people uh, in various ways, whether it be through the videos or you know, through Messenger, um, text messages, some of them, um, regarding some of them weren't, weren't even building boats, just wanted to shoot the shit, which was kind of cool. But uh, one guy, for instance, is from Bahrain, um, country just outside of Dubai. And he started building, it looks like a Glenel design, although it's not the zip, I'm not sure what it is, but it looks like a Glenel design. He started building a boat um, about at the midway point when I was working on the zip, about the two year mark. And he uploaded a bunch of videos to YouTube of his process, and he's been in contact with me quite a bit. And what's really neat is to see, if you go watch his videos, and I believe, I believe it's Arabic he's speaking. I, I can't speak Arabic, I have no idea. But uh, just watching his videos, you can, you can tell, you can understand what he's talking about, what he's doing, where he's at. And what's super cool is that I see a ton of my zips features that he liked and adapted in his own way to his boat. So that's super flattering. It's, it's pretty neat to see that. And again, there, there's guys that, uh, you know, I've, I've contacted or contacted me um, one way or another from Australia. Australians, you have an unbelievable accent. I'm so jealous of your accent. Um, there's been people who contacted me from the UK. Um, again, awesome accent. Um, there's a guy, in fact, I was talking back and forth with him earlier today uh, on Messenger, who's from Egypt, living in Egypt, and he is currently building a Glenel Zip to run on the Nile River. I mean, how freaking cool is that, a Glenel Zip on the Nile? In fact, if you go to the Glenel website and you check out the forum, the Builders Forum, I believe it's under Small Outboards, and his, his uh, thread is called the zip is on the Nile, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I've been contacted by, by people all over the planet, um, which is, it's just kind of neat. So, you know, the YouTube videos, obviously worldwide, you know, people from every walk of life see them. So, so let's talk about products I've used building the zip. Um, every single product that I used in this entire boat, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, varnish or paints or primers 
or epoxies or wood or electrical components, all of this stuff, all of these products, I had to buy myself. The gauges, you know, none of that was provided for me. Uh, I didn't have a, a sponsor that was like giving me shit to build this boat. This was all out of pocket, all of it. So when you hear me talk about a particular product like, like the captain's varnish, I'm not getting paid for that. <laughs> They're not sending me a check, you know. Um, but I'm just trying to say, hey, this is what I used. These are my results. I can't give you any other experience other than my own. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, you know. And because I'm not paid, I can be honest. If something sucks, I'm going to say it. But again, I, I haven't come across anything that was just so terrible I'd never use it again. Um, you know, I had remarkably good luck with pretty much every product I used. Uh, I had some, some mistakes along the way that were my own mistakes, but I don't blame the product for that at all. So, you know, uh, when I talk about products I've used, I'm not plugging them because I'm getting cash. I'm just saying, hey, this is what I used and this is whether, you know, whether or not it worked and how it worked. So, uh, you know, I haven't ever been questioned about that, but just so you know. Um, yeah, so what's going to be the next project? Um, I get asked that one a lot. I don't know, to be honest with you. This summer, I'm just enjoying the zip. Um, I don't really know what's going to be the next project. I have, I have a car uh, project that will come up sometime in the future. Um, it's a 64 American 440 convertible. Uh, runs and drives. It was a, restored in the early... Early 90s, it's starting to show. Uh, so that's going to need paint and body. It's going to need interior. It's going to need uh, engine tore down, rebuilt. It's going to need suspension gone through, steering gone through, brakes gone through. So that's an upcoming project, and I'll probably do monthly videos on that. Who knows when I'll start it. Uh, I'd like to build a Harley-Davidson bobber, bar hopper style, hard-tailed Springer front end, uh, you know, a little chopper bob tank, that, that sort of thing. So uh, sometime in the future, I'll probably do one of those and probably do a video series on it. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Um, there's a possibility, and I don't want anybody to get too excited, but there's a possibility I may build another boat. I've been asked a lot about it. Uh, it's crossed my mind. However, if I do build another boat, it's not going to be like this one. It's not going to be a beautiful, uh, you know, varnish, bright work everywhere, plank deck, no. If I build another boat, it's going to be, you know, a utility boat, maybe like a 16 foot center console, little to no bright work, lots of paint, that'll just be to take out and beat off the rocks and crab and fish out of. That'll be like a, a work boat. It will not be beautiful, clear, bright, varnished finish. You know? So. That's if, and that's a big if, that happens. And who knows how long down the road that would be. Um, so, something else I wanted to talk about is, uh, you know, there's been all sorts of comments on my videos about how, you know, people don't have time or they don't have the money or the skills or, you know, we've gone over a lot of that in the past, some of it in this video. Um, you know, I've got too much going on in my life. I hear that one on occasion. So I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of insight into my life over the last four years um, to show you that I have had a ton going on in my life and not, not all of it good. Um, so let's start four years ago, started building a zip, uh, July 14th of 2014. Uh, Later in that month, uh, my uncle, who was a, a fantastic guy, um, he passed away. Uh, we, were, we were close. He was my shooting buddy, uh, my fishing buddy. Uh, lived in Southern California. Uh, him and my aunt bought a retirement home uh, here in Oregon. Um, just did everything right, you know, played by all the rules, um, did everything you're supposed to do, worked hard, had a, a successful career. Retired, bought a retirement home. They had purchased a uh, Yamaha Rhino side by side to go out and beach comb, uh, a camp trailer to go camping. He bought a big boat, 26, 7 foot big boat uh, for taking offshore and fishing, uh, and, and passed away before he ever got a chance to enjoy any of that. 
So that was the first month I started building the zip. Uh, and that, that was rough, man. Uh, he's a darn good guy. Um, so I had that going on. Um, fast forward, you know, about uh, seven, eight months, something like that. And I got promoted at work, um, which was cool. I went from a, a lead millwright to the millwright supervisor position. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn a new position. I'm trying to learn how to be a supervisor. I've never done that before. On top of that, we had just broke ground on a um, capital, large, multi-million dollar capital project. We were basically adding an entire small log uh, sawmill or processor onto our existing large log line. Uh, basically doubling production. That was like a two-year project. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn a new job, new position, and I also got 10 million things going on in this gigantic project. It was a pretty stressful time. Uh, on top of my, my uncle passing away and building the zip and producing and, and uploading videos of it. Um, so, yeah, fast forward, you know, another four months or so, and my not quite father-in-law, uh, Jennifer and I are not married, uh, he, he passed away uh, of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Um, and that was, that was tough, you know. Uh, I, knew, I knew the man for 10 years at the time. Um, absolutely senseless, no indication as to why. Just gone one day. So that was, you know, rough mentally on her and on me uh, financially because we had to you know go take care of all of his stuff that was left undone uh, on top of storing you know possessions of his here and things like that so that that was terrible um, she lost it a little bit there um, shortly after that period of time she decided to be unfaithful multiple times that was very very rough um, you know fast forward about another six months eight months go by and my dad was diagnosed with uh, stage three cancer they were they were just being nice it was it was four it was stage four they they did what they could but he didn't make it a month I think from diagnosis to death uh, so I lost my dad and you know, and fast forward another five, six months, and another uncle of mine passed away. Um, he 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 was always the crazy uncle. He was the one where, you know, everything you did was way over the speed limit and way under the radar. Everything. Uh, he was a lot of fun. Did all kinds of fun stuff with him. So he passed away. So now you know, I'm I'm down four relatives over the course of like three and a half years. All of this while learning a new job, uh, while a major capital project is going on, while building the zip, while uploading videos for the zip. So it's been just a really stressful, trying, emotional four years of my life, all while doing the zip build, you know? So it, it's absolutely possible if you want it enough, if you're, you know, if you're strong enough, if, you, if you're determined enough. So, you know, regardless of what's going on around you in life, it's still possible. It's absolutely still possible. So, I guess we'll close this, we'll close this video up. Um, I guess if I could stress anything in this video, it is that, you know, the most important trait or skill or ability you could, you could ever possess if you're going to build your own boat is perseverance. It's not the amount of tools you have. It's not the amount of time you have. It's not what you have going on externally in your life. Um, it's not, it's not dollar bills. You know, this Rome wasn't built in, uh, in one day. Neither will you exist unless you're real good. But uh, perseverance, you just one day at a time, eat this elephant one bite at a time, baby steps, you know, who knows how long it's going to take and really who cares? It's, it's every bit as much of the journey of building the zip as it is the end result and getting to play with it. So yeah, the, the absolute most important skill, trait or ability is perseverance. Keep 
pushing and pushing and pushing and don't ever stop. Don't ever give in. Don't quit. You can do it. And you can do it every bit as nice as this one and more than likely nicer, better. So thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to all my subscribers. Um, thank you to everyone who's watched the videos, followed the build from the start, caught in the middle and went back and caught up. Thank you to everybody uh, for your, your polite comments, for following, um, for being supportive, for always having nice things to say. Um, again, it's been, it's been so much fun. Even amidst all of the pain in the ass, uh, it's been so much fun. And I just could not, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, it's been really an experience of a lifetime. So again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, rate, comment, and we'll see you guys sometime on some project. Yeah.